Hey guys, I'm Alphonse. Welcome to the 12th episode of Anybody Can Code C Programming Series. If you'd like to take a look at the previous episodes, please use the link in the description. In today's episode, we'll be looking at functions in C programming. First, what are functions? Functions are a set of statements that perform a certain task. Now, why do we use functions? Suppose you're observing the temperature of a place every minute and you're interested in writing a program that converts the temperature from Celsius to Fahrenheit. It is not possible to have a formula written for each and every data. So what do we do? We make use of functions. We write a function that has the conversion formula and then we call the function n number of times. So there are two types of functions in C programming. The first one is the inbuilt functions or the standard library functions. And the second type of function is a user defined function. Let's understand what are inbuilt functions or standard library functions. Suppose you want to find the square root of a number or say if you want to find if two strings are equal. You need not write a code separately to implement them. C programming gives us inbuilt functions that allow us to perform these operations. So in order to use these functions, one has to include the header files, the appropriate header files in the program. Suppose you want to use all the math related functions. You need to make use of the header file math.h. And similarly, for all the string functions, one has to make use of string.h header file. Now let's look at a program program to better understand the working of inbuilt functions. We have two programs. The first program is to find the square root of a number. Like I mentioned before, if we need to make use of any math related functions, we need to include the header file math.h. Next, let, let's uh, declare a float variable num. Let's receive, let's write a scan of statement to receive that variable from the user. As you can see, I'm going, to, I'm going to make use of the inbuilt function sqrt. Let's go ahead and run this program. So uh, enter the number, I'm going to give the number as five and we are able to get the square root of the number without have, having us to write a program separately for the square root. Now the second program is to check if two strings are equal. So if you have to make use of any inbuilt functions in, uh, for, for string, we need to use the header file string.h. And I'm going to declare two strings. In string one, I'm giving hello. And in string two for now, I'm also giving it as hello.
So to come to see if two strings are equal, we need to use the function string compare. So what the string compare does is that if the two st given strings are equal, it returns a value of zero. If string one is less than string two, it returns a value of minus one. And if the string one is greater than string two, it returns a value of one. Here we are interested in checking if the two strings are equal. So the value that we are expect that we are expecting to be returned is zero. But in if statements, if a va if the value uh, is zero, it actually terminates. So we are going to use the uh, equal to operator to check if the value returned is zero. Let's go ahead and run this program. As you can see, it, it is giving us the output that, that the strings are equal. So let me go and ch change one of the va values of any of the those two strings. So I'm changing the value of string two to hey. So now we know that the two strings are not equal. Let me go and run this program. Now I'm entering the number as three. So we're also able to get the square root of the number three, as well as we can see that the strings are not equal once I change the value of string two to hey. Now let's look at user-defined functions. User-defined functions are functions that are written by the user to perform a certain task. This is the syntax of the of user defined functions. Here, the written type indicates the type of data that is written. A function may or may not return a data. If a function does not return a value, then the written type of that function is void. Next is the function name. The function name refers to the actual name of the function. The func the formal parameter list refers to the order, the data type, and the number of arguments. A function may or may not have a formal parameter list. It is always a good practice to use the keyword void if to explicitly state that the function does not take any parameter list. The arguments associated with the function is called formal parameters. These arguments act as placeholders and hold the values that is being passed from the actual arguments. The arguments that are associated with the function, function call are called actual arguments. These actual arguments should match with the formal arguments with, uh, in terms of order, the data type, and the number of arguments. Written value is the value that is written from the function. A function can only return one value, but a function can contain one or many written statements in it. So let's look at a program to better understand the working of user-defined functions. Here we have a program to find the simple interest. To find the simple interest, there are it, it depends upon three variables. The principal amount, the interest rate per annum, and the number of years. Let's go and declare those variables. We are getting the principal amount first. Uh, 
and next we are getting the interest rate And the next is the number of years. So till now, we are done with by receiving the values from the user. Let's go ahead and create a first function. So first, we need to mention the return type. So here, the return type is going to be float. And next, the function name, I'm going to give it a simple interest. And next is the formal parameter list. Here we have three variables and hence the formal parameter will also have three variables. So the return keyword returns the calculation of the function back to the calling statement. And so we are done with the function. Now we have to call the function. I'm giving the call function name and within that I'm giving the three variables, P, R, and T. So it is important to uh, note that we cannot interchange these the uh, place of these three variables. In case if we interchange here, we'll also have to make changes in the formal parameter. Let's go ahead and run this program. I'm entering the principal amount as 5,000. I'm giving the interest rate as five and for number of years, I'm giving it as four. We can see we are, I mean the simple interest is being calculated. So this is how a function works in C programming. Now we know how a function works. Next, let's see what a function prototype is. Function prototype is also called as function declaration. Function prototype is a declaration of function that specifies the return type, the function name, and the parameter list. It does not contain any function body. The function prototype informs the compiler that the function may be later redefined in the function. A couple of things to note here is that it is not mandatory to include the parameter names during function declaration. And one shouldn't forget to terminate the function declaration with a semicolon. Now, let's modify the previous program using function prototype. Here. function prototype includes the return type, the function name and the parameter list. Since it is not mandatory to include the parameter name, I'm just going to remove that. And I'm going to terminate it with a semicolon. And I'm going to define the function after the main function. Let's go ahead and run this program. 
so I'm giving the principal amount as 6500 for interest of 10 and for four years so we can see that the simple interest is being calculated with this we come to the end of this episode in the next episode we'll be looking at the types of function arguments in c programming so stay tuned hey youtube how are you doing stay tuned to facebook for more awesome videos don't forget to subscribe